possible. So thank you to everyone for taking the time to join us. Uh, we are excited to present Marama. I'm Dr. Heather Sanderson and I created Marama. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I have a clinical practice focusing on dementia. I'm Nikki Romani and I am the activity specialist at Marama. <laughs> So we're so excited to have Nikki here to share with us you know, the day-to-day -day experience and uh, the details of what our residents get into at Marama um, every day. So first I wanted to start by just describing Marama. Um, again, my name is Dr. Heather Sanderson and I created Marama based on my clinical experience. Marama, the word means moonlight or wisdom in the Maori language, the indigenous language of New, New Zealand. And the way I imagine what we do at Marama is that we are these guides, we are that light that shines the way through the darkness of a lack of memory, of kind of this unawareness. So we shine that light towards the dawn, towards that dawn of awakening and, and re, um, like reacquainting yourself with the world, which we've seen in our residents at Marama. The elephants represent sort of this caregiving aspect. There's almost two elephants in our logo and uh, they're, they're taking care of each other. That's very much who we are. We are about caretaking, about caregiving. And also of course the wisdom, elephants never forget. They're rever highly revered. So, Part of how I got into this work uh, was certainly through Dr. Bredesen. We offer an immersive experience in Dr. Bredesen's uh, protocol. LB was the first patient I saw after being uh, exposed to Dr. Bredesen's work and then trained by him. So once I had been trained, I uh, was then on his list of providers that had been uh, trained in his protocol, the RECODE protocol. And LB came in soon after that. She was very enthusiastic and her MOCA was a score of two out of 30. The MOCA is the Montreal Cognitive Assessment and a perfect score is a 30. Normal is over 26, although arguably, maybe if you're getting towards 26, you wanna look into potentially reversing some cognitive decline. 26 isn't normal for everyone. Uh, and she was at a two. She was at a state where I would ask her a question and by the time she was responding, she had forgotten what the question was. She was almost nonverbal, like very small, yes or no answers to some questions. She would smile a lot. She was, she was a very kind and clearly a happy-go-lucky person, but really couldn't communicate much with her husband who had brought her in and we could already tell her handwriting had been affected. You can see on the left, this is her baseline MOCA. This Montreal Cognitive Assessment is a one page worksheet that we have all patients and residents fill out. And you can see how she's not really connecting the lines on when she goes to copy the cube. She draws the circle for her clock, but she doesn't uh, have any numbers or hands. Just six weeks later, she's now starting to connect some of those lines on her cube. She's adding numbers to the clock, even though they're not perfect. You can see that she's making progress. We also saw it in how we related to her. She was now able to answer questions. She was also bickering with her husband about something that had happened the night before. Their relationship had completely transformed. She wasn't going downhill quickly anymore. She was actually reversing her decline in just six weeks. When I saw what was possible for her, I couldn't help but think what is possible for so many other people out there who are suffering unnecessarily with dementia. So of course, you know, of course I have dedicated my life since then to changing the narrative around dementia. I know with certainty that we can reverse it in the vast majority of patients. I created Marama because I had patients, their family members, people asking me, where can I send my loved one? And I didn't see any place available that I really had faith would do an immersive, a full immersive experience in the Bredesen protocol. A couple of places are starting to get it, but there was no one offering an organic ketogenic diet or a lot of the other things that we're going to talk through tonight. So why Marama? I created Marama because I know that Alzheimer's is optional. Most people can reverse their cognitive decline. And what I was seeing clinically was that those who weren't doing it, it was because they weren't able to fully implement. 
Oftentimes it's a daughter who brings a parent in, sometimes it's a spouse and that person, you know, particularly daughters uh, who I can totally relate to are raising their young children, they have full-time jobs, and then they're also wanting the best for their parent. And unfortunately, they just don't have the capacity to change their diet, encourage them to exercise, to change out their, you know, toxic things that might be in their home, whether it's mold or even just cleaning products. So when I think about what we can do to really get the maximum amount of people getting the benefits of this protocol, it's making it easy. And that was why I created this immersive experience called Marama. When I also think about sort of why I'm inspired to do this work, why I'm inspired to bring this to as many people as possible, it's because I just think as a society, we can do better. We're leaving a lot on the table. Our elders are at the height of their wisdom and experience. They have so much to give. And if we park them in front of TVs and feed them cereal and sandwiches and cake and cookies, we are doing them a massive disservice. And we are also squandering a, a very, very valuable resource. So I'm excited that as Marama grows, as the Bredesen Protocol grows, as we change this narrative about what's possible, that we will bring those seniors back into society. They will start to be an asset again. When we think about how we want to be treated, I, I mean, I've created Marama because it's the type of place I would be I would be thrilled to send my parents. It's the mm -hmm. type of place that I wouldn't mind living. <laughs> and when we think about you know, how we treat our elders, how this reflects what we value as a society, again, I just think that we can do so much more. So the goals for this webinar are to describe the Marama experience. I also hope that you will take away little things that you can do today at home. Now, Marama is, we're in Southern California, we're in San Diego, and not everyone can make it here. We also, the most common question we get is, is there a Marama in my city? I don't want my mom or dad to move across the country. I want them down the street. I can completely relate, and believe me, we're working on it. <laughs> and yet, you know, there's so many things that are totally accessible to you at home today. So Nikki and I are going to talk through a lot of those pieces. And even if you can't make it to Marama, what we hope is that you can incorporate a lot of these great things at home. So we'll go through the four pillars of the Marama experience, starting with the non-toxic environment, the organo, organic keto flex diet, the brain healing and optimizing activities, as well as the exceptional caregiving that's available. Once we get through that, then we'll move on to question and answer. And I see you guys putting lots of questions in the chat, thank you, and we will get to as many as possible. So first, Marama uh, is a residential care facility for the elderly. This is licensed by the state of California. So we follow a set of standards that is uh, created by the state. Of course, our standards are a bit higher than the state's. So we have LPAs or analysts that are uh, employees of the state who will come and check on us, do unannounced inspections. They're really looking basically like to make sure there's not an infestation of insects or that people aren't being treated poorly. Our standards are much, much higher than this, but we appreciate that they are really looking out for the most vulnerable among us. We are licensed as a 12 bed residential facility. So just to be clear, I do have a clinic where we do the medical side of things. And then at Marama, what we do is the residential piece. So this is the implementation of your doctor's orders, whether it's a medically prescribed diet, the supplements, prescriptions, we help make sure all of that is implemented at Marama. We don't do any prescriptions there. We don't have nurses or doctors on staff. Day to day, there are caregivers that help to care for all of our amazing residents. We can take care of all of the implementation for you. This often is the hardest part. And like I mentioned in my clinical practice, what I saw was the biggest hurdle for people who uh, weren't getting the most out of the Bredesen protocol at home. So first is the non-toxic environment. In the community space, we have thoroughly tested it for mold. So I, I work not only with Dr. Bredesen, but also with Dr. Neil Nathan, follow his work very closely and have for many years. And mold can directly impact cognitive function. So I have made sure that we thoroughly tested the home before we took control of the property. And then of course, leaks come up. We've had a dishwasher leak, we've had a shower leak, and immediately we get plumbers in, of course, and then also we have mold inspectors and mold remediation happening immediately after there's any sort of water damage. 
Um, and we thoroughly make sure that all of that is taken care of. We also run the GC Multi by IQ Air. This is a very high quality uh, air filter. There are things that we cannot control like wildfires in Southern California. And so we make sure that those air purifiers are going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that anything that needs to be changed out in terms of filters, we are getting those changed on a regular basis. So your air filter is only as good as that filter that gets changed out. We also have 100% non-toxic cleaning products. We love Branch Base Basics, EO, you can see in the picture there. We like BioClean, um, a handful of, of lines that are we know are 100% non-toxic. We also use all non-toxic detergents. And we are very mindful of the influence of sounds and smells and visual stimuli on our residents. We can all relate to being a little frazzled by a place that feels very cluttered. So we keep the clutter down, we could keep the sounds to a minimum or make sure that we're using them intentionally. And the same, the same with smells. Uh, really, I think the only smells at Marama should be coming from the kitchen, the amazing <laughs> kitchen. So in the bedroom, what we've done is we've curated mattresses, pillows, linens, everything again is non-toxic. So we use avocado green mattresses, pillows, mattress pads, and then we use organic cotton sheets and towels also everything, including the detergents are fragrance free. So there's no artificial smells in, in the bedrooms or in the communal space. In addition, when a resident shows up, we offer them a, a welcome bag. It has an organic robe in it. We also have uh, the soaps, hand sanitizers, lotions, toothpaste, shaving cream for the gentlemen. And all of this is because I know how overwhelming it can be to comb through these different products which ones are non-toxic, which ones are fragrance free. So we wanna just take all that worry off of, usually it's again, the daughter, the, the power of attorney, POA, anybody who's doing the decision-making, we wanna make sure they don't have to worry about that. Um, so we welcome everyone with these bags. Next is the organic ketogenic diet and the meals. Uh, what you'll see here are pictures of the residents in the garden as well as our beautiful greens growing. So we offer cooking classes. The ultimate goal of Marama is that our residents move in and then they move home independent. And they can maintain an independent lifestyle for as long as possible. So the cooking classes really seek to engage and to teach residents how to cook when they can move home. So we have an on-site garden that the residents actively participate in. Another thing that comes up is water. Here in Southern California, unfortunately, the water, we're sort of at the end of the, the, end of the river. And so the water isn't ideal. There's lots of pesticides, herbicides, even pharmaceuticals that are end up in the water, lots of contaminants. And so it's, although it's quite a chore, we have staff that go to a, a local spring and fill up glass jugs every week to make sure that we have plenty of drinking and cooking water for everyone that is completely non-toxic. So if you're at home, what I recommend, um, and you can usually have this delivered is the Mountain Valley spring water. In your area, you may be able to find another clean water source, but you wanna make sure that it's been third-party tested and that you know there aren't contaminants in it. So Nikki, what are some of your favorite meals? What are the what do the residents rave about? They they love all of the meals. So they I, they talk about never having any food that they don't like, which is a testament to our chef and just having organic fresh food. But they really enjoy all the fresh vegetables that we have. I think when you think of keto, you don't really think about vegetables, but we it's a plant based diet. That's what we do, and then we have they have fish and um, chicken or grass fed and grass finished organic beef. But yeah, they talk about just the freshness and the flavors of all the foods that we eat, so. So we do three meals a day, of course. And as Dr. Bredesen recommends, we stop having any food three hours before bedtime. And so our staff is well-trained to make sure if somebody's asking for a midnight snack, they offer tea or water or something else that's not going to interfere with digestion at night so they can get really good restful sleep. Uh, we have, so we have three meals a day. And then we also have two snacks during the day. And Chef Julio, he's incredible. Mm -hmm. He's had amazing guacamole with vegetable chips. I've seen uh, 
the organic chicken, um, curry chicken salad wraps. There's mm -hmm. some other yummy deviled eggs. Yes, he does a lot of uh, fun snacks. He does these uh, like egg egg bites. He's made some of those. Um, he's done uh, bacon and Brussels sprouts is mm -hmm. another snack too. Uh, yeah. So and then Lexi, uh, she's our med tech, so she helps everyone with all the medications. But she also makes these uh, phenomenal desserts that oh, are keto. You know, <laughs> they're so does. good. And lots of mint, lots of cacao. So mm -hmm. it, it gets that sweet craving, but it doesn't raise anyone's blood sugar so that they can be in a in a state of ketosis. So this is a doctor prescribed diet. So again, we're following the orders that your Bredesen trained doctor gives you when you move into Marama. And we're very conscious, you know, if your doctor is concerned about a, that you have excess weight and the goal is weight loss, we're keeping track of weight, weight maintenance, weight gain. Some, for some doctors, you know, and for some patients, the, the goal is really that they gain weight. And when you're on a Bredesen protocol, you know, because you're working with someone like Nikki, at least at Marama mm -hmm. and at home, I hope you're working with a fitness coach who can help you to build muscle. That's so important for brain and cognitive health. Um, and if you're on some hormones that can help support that as well, you may gain weight on keto. You're going to lose fat, but gain muscle. So what we want is that strength. And we have, this is not a low calorie diet. This is a high calorie diet that is the best brain healthy diet. Then the other things that we want to consider is, you know, if, you're, if your doctor is concerned about too much animal protein or too little, or if we're concerned about maybe coconut oils and other saturated fats because of ABOE 4-4 status or even then 3-4 status. <laughs> My turn. So I am the activity specialist. My background, I'm a certified athletic trainer and I've worked 10 years in the physical therapy space. I'm also a life coach, so I'm all about encouraging people and making sure that they are seen and heard and just participating in activities. But I think a big part of this is what's one of the pillars is we have the brain healing activities, but we also exercise and move our bodies. So what we do in the morning is after breakfast, we start off with a morning walk and we get our bodies moving, we socialize, we're talking, we're looking at the sky, we're looking at plants, we're talking about the morning and just getting excited for the day. And that is a really great way to start your morning. And then we do another thing, it's meditation in the morning, it's 12 minutes meditation, we bring them inside, uh, they sit down and it's just really healing for its emotional balance, it relieves stress, um, it, it's just a whole brain healing changes brain patterns. So we have them do that. It's, um, it's a satanama, <laughs> uh, kirat kirta. And uh, so that's the meditation that they do. And then we do something called the daily chronicles. And this is just getting them to know what the date is today. We talk about the date. We have them write in little booklets that they have just to make sure that we're practicing writing, but then also that they know the date, the time, the year, what day of the week it is, and they're writing that stuff down. So then they can refer back to that, that they actually, when they write in their own handwriting and they refer back, they, it helps them to remember a little bit more and realize like, oh, I actually wrote this. I wrote this down. And then they can talk to their families about it too. When they ask like, what did you do throughout the day? So we have them write throughout the day what they've done. But the Daily Chronicles is just, we read through some trivia and what happened on this date back in history. And it's really fun for them because it brings up memories for them. And then that sparks conversation and sparks memories to talk about uh, the stuff that they did in the past, past relationships, past memories that they have. It's really fascinating to hear some of their stories. And then we also do a lot of artwork and arts and crafts. We've done some collage making, some scrapbooking, painting, and it's really fun and engaging for them. And we have music playing. And so it's really like a social aspect, but it helps with fine motor skills too, doing the painting with a paintbrush, trying to stay in the lines or using their creativity to create something of their own. So it's really fun. We actually have binders for everybody. 
and we're keeping all of the things that they've done. So it's really neat to see their progress and how they're improving with this whole program. And now some of them are seeing more inside the lines of their painting and painting more on their own. And it's really fascinating to see the progress. And then Dr. Sanderson talked about the garden. So we have a greenhouse, which is incredible with all organic produce and they love going down there because some of them had gardens of their own and they will take charge when they're down there sometimes and they're pulling weeds and they're telling us what the different plants are and so it's so fun to see them engage in that way and also again bringing back past memories and things that they used to do when they were in the garden and it gets their hands dirty and connecting with the soil and everything like that so that's some of our morning activities that we do. We have several uh, contractors who basically come and help us with yoga, meditation. So several times a week, you see the picture here. This is Jody leading our residents in yoga. And she also comes for specifically for meditation. So yoga twice a week, meditation once a week. And then we also have music. So we'll have live music performances. Some of this fluctuates with COVID. We really aim to keep this exceptionally safe. We were very fortunate this past year uh, that not one resident got COVID. We did have five staff over the course of the last 18 months end up with COVID and we were able to keep it completely out of the building and from affecting residents. And this is to some degree to our vigilance around keeping outside people um, out of the building. So any of the activities we do, they are outside unless it's with staff who are we are testing very, very regularly. So we have some pictures now just showing you the activities that we do. So this is some of our residents on a walk. We live in a beautiful, really calm and quiet neighborhood. So they don't, they even comment on that, that there's no traffic, that they feel safe walking up and down the street and in the neighborhood. So that's, that's really nice for them to feel safe where they're walking. And then this is them on the picture on the left is reading through the daily chronicles. So I've been having them read instead of myself, which has been really great for them to be engaged. And some one lady will say, I haven't read this much in a long time. So it's really good to get them stimulated in that way. And then the picture on the right is them writing in their little booklets that they have. So the gentleman there, you can see writing in his booklet, he moved in and he had a pretty progressed dementia. He wasn't talking much because like most of us, you know, he'd heard there was nothing you could do about dementia. So he was really trying to hide it. So he would answer with just one and two word sentence or one and two words instead of a full complete sentence. And now he speaks like, you know, in paragraph form, <laughs> describing his work as a, a biologist and his work at the NIH. And, and he just is a really impressive human being who had kind of become a shell of himself for quite a while. He works hard, so he exercises hard, he stays very engaged, and we've seen some of the incredible benefits. His wife, who's there with him, she, um, it's so fun to see, she's been there, so they've been there since May of 2020, and now we're in September of 2021, so they've been there for over a year, and what we've noticed is that the longer they stay, the better they get, mm -hmm. and they're in a really, um, they're, I mean, it's just so impressive to us, I think we are still, like, there's this yeah. piece of me that still believes there's not much you can do, and, like, no one's going to get fully better, and just watching them, it's like, it just is, reinforces how accessible this recovery is, so she, um, I have a daughter and she remembers that I have a child and for, for the past year and a half, she's so kind. So she'll say, oh, hi, doctor. You know, how do you have a boy or a girl? How old is, how old is your child? And for the past month, she says, Dr. Sanderson, how's Nadia? She's still going to be three, three in December, right? And yes. I mean, I cannot <laughs> believe it. I still am sort of in shock. Like you remember her name, her birthday. She's remembering so much her mm -hmm. short-term memory loss is almost gone. Yes, yes. It's incredible just to watch this and be there every day. And the resident that we're talking about, she is, she's remembering everyone's names. She's remembering what they've done the day before, not even having to look at her book. 
and she'll talk about the things that we did the day before and she is telling the other residents like the staff's names and the other residents names it's just it's really exciting it's really <laughs> there was a new resident moving in about a month ago and i was sitting with the residents for lunch and I said, yeah, there's a new resident moving in. And it was taking me a minute to remember his name. There's a lot going on. And I hadn't met him yet. And she said, oh, yeah. And she had his name yes. right there ready. She was the one correcting me. It's just so phenomenal to see where uh, a year and a half ago, I mean, she really had very progressed uh, short-term memory loss. And her mocha was about 12. Um, and so that has improved significantly. And just watching it is such a privilege. It's, these, This couple in particular, they moved in in May of 2020. So as the pandemic was really taking off, and they are just pioneers who very graciously put their faith in us uh, as we were getting Marama started and so just absolutely phenomenal what we've seen with them and really really inspiring. Mm -hmm. So this is some of the painting and they so the man on the right he has a hard time seeing things and so we've been really trying to get him to stay engaged. I think that was also part of the thing where he was kind of shutting down before. But I think now with being a part of the program, he is really coming alive. It's really cool to see. And he will paint with us. And he'll even ask us like, okay, I want red. Where's the red? And so we'll guide him to the red. And then he's just painting on the picture. And it's, it's really neat to see, like, even looking back at the the paintings that he's done in the past to now, there is a significant difference of him actually being able to see a little bit more of the paper and trying to stay within the lines when before he would barely try, but then he just put a little mark on the page, but he's really, really trying and it's really awesome to see. <laughs> And then these are some pictures from the garden, some of the things that we have harvested. So lots of kale and collard greens, different lettuces. We have lots of amazing tomatoes. So they're showcasing all of the harvest that we've gathered from our greenhouse. Oh, yummy herbs. I'm always yes. grabbing a little Those mint. Too. <laughs> So this is the, we like to call it the casita. So this is where we do all of our exercises and different therapies. And so the first one is the live two. So the picture on the left is one of our residents. She's sitting on the bike. She's got the little shaka. She has the oxygen mask on. So what this does, there's a bag that's behind her and that fills up with oxygen. And then there's a switch that's a positive and a negative switch. And so we go back and forth between the switches, but the positive is just a rush of oxygen. The negative, what it does is it, it makes you feel like you're in altitude and it, it, it causes your vessels to vasodilate. So then every, cause your body's searching for that oxygen, it's wanting more. And so when we're in that mode, we have a pulse ox that we put on their finger. And so once we get it down to 88% oxygen, then we flip the, that's one of the percentages we do. We'll flip the, the switch back to positive. And then it's like they get a rush of this oxygen to their body, to their brain because of that dilation. This is really fun. Uh, Mark Squibb is who invented this machine. And we, um, I actually had some potential residents call in December of 2019 and they were up in Oregon. They weren't gonna be able to make it to Marama, but they said, if you could do one thing at home, what would it be? And I said, live two. So sure enough, they did it. And a few months later, they had, a, a, the woman was calling for her husband. She was very concerned about him. And both of them had gotten more mental clarity. She had made more progress with her fibromyalgia than she had in years. I mean, it was just astounding. And they were measuring using Brain HQ. They were measuring his cognitive function. So she was giving me percentages of how much he had improved in just three months. I was turned on to live too by several of my patients who got great results, phenomenal results over the course of a couple of months. And so what's happening is there's an increase in circulation, improved detoxification. There's also a senolytic effect or a little bit of a stress response that you get that actually triggers apoptosis or the recycling of cells that maybe aren't optimally performing. So this is great, very helpful for cognitive function. 
and um, we're, we're thrilled to have it at Marama and have uh, residents using it. Nikki, you have some really great tips about just kind of how you interact with residents to help them do something that maybe doesn't feel comfortable right at first. Yeah, so what I do with them, especially because we use the bike with this level two, is I get them on the bike first and that they're right next to the machine. So as it's on, I'm describing to them what it is. And as they're on the bike, I'm describing what the machine is and I show them the mask. And I say, this is full of oxygen. And the best way to use this device is you put this on your face. We'll put it on your nose and your mouth and you're going to breathe in oxygen. And so I have them on the bike first. And then as I'm talking through it with them, they say, okay, I, I can try this. I can do this. And so then I put, as I'm putting the mask on, I will still talk to them. I will talk them through it and say, this is going over your nose and your mouth. I'm going to strap this behind your head and you will start to, it may be a little bit harder to breathe, but that's okay. And then I say, if you, at any point you want to take it off, this is it, something we have to keep on. So I'm like constantly talking to them and talking them through it. And once they get it on, they realize, oh, this is not that bad. Uh, I can do this for a little bit. And then we, I start them on the bike with the Livo 2. We try to do 20 minutes, like that's the goal, but I don't start them there. So we'll start with maybe five, 10 minutes, and then we'll continue on from there the more and more that they get used to it. Nikki does a great job, as do the other uh, caregivers who've been trained by Nikki, in engaging the residents, making sure she's clearly communicating, repeating what she's already said, you know, just making sure they feel encouraged and reassured as they try new things. It can be very scary for the residents. They don't really know what to expect. It can also just be uncomfortable. Uh, we see this with our new residents as they move in. There's a bit of a hump that we have to get over. Uh, we just had a new resident move in. And so we're just, we're coming out of that right now. At Marama, we just have one resident move in at a time. We never have more than one, um, unless they're a couple, because it really does take extra work on the caregiver's part, but also it can kind of bring down the, the feeling in, in the community. So we need, the other residents are so great. Doc, uh, Dr. G, who I was talking about, who worked um, as a biologist, he he recently said to me, he's like, we need to have a preamble is what he called it. It was great. He wanted to basically write a little synopsis saying, just stick with it. Just get through it. Don't question everything. Don't criticize everything. Just get through that hard part because at the other end, there's clarity and, and better mood, more energy, better sleep. All of these things are kind of up and over that hump. So I really encourage all of you caregivers, thank you at home for the hard work that you are doing because we know that this process isn't always comfortable. The quicker you can dive fully in, like the quicker the, the discomfort is over. And we have that luxury at Marama. It only lasts about three, three weeks or so. What I see at the clinic is that when people are doing it at home, it often can last a bit longer because it's a drawn out process. It's not like that quick, uh, quick process when you're fully immersed. So sorry, that was a, a little <laughs> deviation, um, but please explain the Violet. Yes, so the Violet, we have one of our residents on the right in the picture. She has that on her head. So there's little infrared lights on there and it penetrates through the skull. There's also a nasal clip and there, there's a light in there too that will go up the nasal canal to the brain. And what this does is it simulates mitochondria to create ATP, which is energy for your whole body, for your brain. And I know there's lots of studies on that, if you wanna explain that. Yeah, there's a Dr. Michael Hamlin, who's out of Harvard who, Harvard, who has published extensively on the benefits of red light therapy. There's also literature out of Russia, um, and more and more people are adopting this red light therapy. It's very safe and seems to be very effective. Uh, so we are using it with our more severe residents. So when we when they have more severe disease, the lower MOCA scores, we tend to see quicker benefit, like in the space of 20 minutes. With our residents, like uh, Mrs. G here, she, you know, we don't notice things day to day, but over the course of time, we're seeing dramatic benefits. And so we certainly think, based on the literature, that the, the red light therapies, including the Violet and the Juve light that we have at Marama, are contributing to that through this mitochondrial mechanism that Nikki was describing. 
Yeah, and we also have the Juve Light, like she just mentioned, and that helps with collagen production, reduces stress and anxiety, helps to promote better sleep, and it decreases inflammation. So there's a lot of great benefits, and I know a lot of more people are tapping into the red light. And we also have a sauna, which is infrared light as well in, um, inside the sauna, but that is really great for detoxification. So we really want to get them to sweat and sweat out all the toxins and then take a cold shower after. This, of course, is if it's recommended by your doctor, this isn't safe for everyone. Not all of these devices are safe for everybody. Even exercise, our most recent resident he went through a bit of a cardiac workup and his doctor had asked if he not exercise for the first couple of weeks while we were waiting on some uh, data to come back. And so, you know, we want everything to be approved by everyone's doctor. We're obviously very committed to safety here, but these are things that are available and people like Nikki and our other caregivers are very well versed in helping um, people to get the maximum benefit out of it in a very safe way. So you can see one of our residents there on the right is getting the benefits of that red light therapy. We have them wear little goggles so that it doesn't damage their eyes and then spend about 20, 30 minutes in front of that, that red light. The last thing is the Biomat, which is the picture on the right, and that's amethyst crystals, and it really helps with reducing anxiety and releasing tense mus muscles. And for example, with this, we've had some residents have, one resident has scoliosis, and so when we get her to lay on the Biomat, we've noticed that immediately after, she's a little bit straighter. So I think with the crystals and just the releasing ten the tension in the muscles, it really helps to calm them, to soothe them. Um, and then we also have uh, a lot of exercises because I have a physical therapy background and working with athletes and athletic training. I want, I'm cor incorporating strength training and resistance training. We have little free weights and resistance bands and they do, for example, sit to stand, which is super easy. All you need is a chair and they really enjoy it. And it's a lot of fun. It's also phenomenal, the health benefits, right? We all know that movement is so important for circulation, for cognitive function. Basically, if you could bottle exercise, we would have no more chronic diseases on the planet. <laughs> So one of the unfortunate things about the typical senior living facility is that they discourage exercise because people are labeled a fall risk. So Gigi, who you were yes. just referring to, she had come from another facility and she had fallen several times. And so her daughter was really excited to have her move into Marama and work with someone like Nikki and be encouraged to exercise. So uh, as she had struggled with scoliosis when she was younger and um, it still has the repercussions of that. When she first moved in, she, you know, she's always balancing on the walls. She has a cane. She also, you know, she just stooped and wasn't mm -hmm. straight. And now she walks with so much more confidence, so much more upright over the course of several weeks. Uh, Nikki really transformed her physically <laughs> and encouraged her. You know, she could sometimes not want to engage, not want to participate. And the, uh, the staff um, with Nikki kind of at the lead of that really gets people to participate, to show up, to give it their best. And then we see the results. It's really exciting. Yes, it is. <laughs> So caregivers are uh, at Marama 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, there's always someone in the building who can help. Um, and then the training is specific to our expectations. So many times when a, a patient shows up in a residential care facility, the expectation is that they're basically there to get worse and that they will progressively get worse. The story that we've heard over and over again is that my loved one moved into an assisted living facility and they immediately went downhill. Their cognitive function, their health, their movement, their heart disease, all of these things. And part of that is the diet. It's not a healthy diet at typical facilities. The average amount that is spent per day on resident meals in the state of California is $7 in an entire day on food. Mm -hmm. We spend about $10 per meal per resident. And that's because we are committed to getting an organic ketogenic diet with very, very high quality foods. When there's king salmon in, in season, I am all over it. Everyone's <laughs> eating that at least twice a week. So the expectation that people get better when they move in 
you know, people often rise to that. So if the expectation is that somebody's going to get worse, they will often, uh, you know, succumb to that. And because our res our residents and our staff all expect to get better, they do. I think that's a big part of it. The other uh, benefit that we have is that we're not family, right? So we're not taking anything personally. We're not connecting her not remembering to something that happened 20 years ago. You know, it's really one of those things. Of course, we all have dynamics in our families. And when, when the resident is separate from that, it's kind of fun to watch just what's possible. Um, and it, But also we wanna inspire you at home. Yes. Nikki, you have some really great tips for how to engage, how to redirect and how to encourage people. Yeah, so something that I do is whenever a resident walks into the room, I say, I'm so excited you're here. I'm so happy to, to have you here. I'm so happy to see you. We all want you to, to be here. And we have a resident in particular, she would say, thank you for saying that. That means so much to me. And even if they're trying to leave and we want them to participate, I'm like, where are you going? We're going to miss you. We don't want you to leave. And oftentimes they will turn back around and be like, oh, I'm going to be missed. I'm going to stay here. So just really having that, the making sure they're seen, heard, that they feel included and involved is huge in this demographic. I think in all of us too. Yeah. <laughs> but I think just making sure that they because we want to make sure that they're engaged and participating, but the way to do that is with our attitudes. Like if we have an excited, positive, uplifting attitude and behavior around them, that's going to bring their mood up and they will want to stay and want to be around us. It's really fun to watch them engage. So in terms of medications and supplements, we also, I mentioned Lexi, she makes her fabulous desserts. She, she's doing double duty most of the time. <laughs> yes. um, we're, we're a small community and part of it is that community engagement that everyone knows each other. They treat each other like family and sometimes even better. Um, mm -hmm. But also what Lexi's job is, is to make sure that we are following your doctor's orders to a T. Now, some of the residents at Marama have been my patients. And so she understands that thyroid comes before breakfast, 30 minutes to 45 minutes before breakfast, before anything else. So though our residents are getting their thyroid medication at the right time in the morning away from everything else so that it works best. They're also getting the things with food, with food, the things away from food. I, again, I work with Neil Nathan. So there's a lot of binders with mycotoxin detox, other detoxification of heavy metals. Those need to be away from food, really important. And so our caregivers know what's away from food, what's with food, what's before bed, what's, you know, all of these things that are quite nuanced and can be really, really challenging to implement at home. Lexi is, she is there full time just to make sure that that happens. She also does a lot of the legwork of getting things refilled, contacting the doctor's office for those refills, contacting the pharmacy to make sure it's going to be there before anybody runs out. For all of you caregivers at home, you know how much time and effort this takes. And she is uh, you know, meticulous about making sure everything is recorded. That's also part of our licensing, is that everything is centrally stored. So sometimes this is a little frustrating for our more independent residents. They wanna keep their supplements or keep their medications in their room. With the, our, our license under the state of California, under the law, we need to have everything in a locked cabinet. And this is to just keep everyone safe, that no one's taking the wrong medication at the wrong time or in the right, wrong amount. So Lexi takes full responsibility. She's phenomenal. She's awesome. She's so great. <laughs> yes. And she comes in early. She stays late. Whatever a resident needs to make sure this is happening, particularly when we're onboarding someone, when a new resident is coming in, there's a lot there. Uh, as many of you know, it's a lot of supplements, often many medications that need to be managed. And so she takes that on and makes sure everyone is safe. So this is me with some of our residents. And again, I'm just talking about being engaging and picking flowers and making sure that they feel included. They have beautiful smiles on their faces because they're so happy. And I think with the program at Marama is so wonderful because we're like you said in the beginning, we're not just sitting around, they're not watching TV all day. We are moving, we're doing activities, we're staying engaged and they're coming to life. They're coming back to life. They are, yeah, it's just inspiring to me, like being there with them every day and seeing the change that's being made is incredible. 
one of the ladies in, in this picture, she was living in a different assisted living um, community. And unfortunately with COVID, uh, she kept getting isolated, more and more isolated because somebody on her wing would be cause positive for COVID and they obviously didn't want her to get it. She also would complain about the crud. The crud is what she called it every day, all day long. I think I'm dying. I think I'm dying. I have this crud. I'm definitely dying. And she really was just so uncomfortable and she didn't feel well. And again, she had that little hump. It took about three, four weeks. But once she got over it, I mean, it was smiles. She gets out of bed in the morning. She's ready to engage. She's excited. She, uh, she just wants to participate. And now she, she'll say to us, I don't really want to get on the bike, but I know it's good for my brain. And so she does it. And she's noticing, as well as her daughter and her other family, that she's more engaged, forgetting less, and, and certainly much happier. So always fun to see. Mm -hmm. So one of the common questions that we get is, how are we measuring the results? So we do a handful of things. Um, we get an EEG through the WAVI. Some of you may have heard of this, but it's a way to measure EEG, voltage potential, uh, and theta, beta uh, brain waves, and look at some of the different um, ratios between them can be meaningful. We're also doing, as I mentioned, the MOCA, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, and we do this every uh, three months or every 12 weeks to see how things are changing. None of these tests are perfect. A lot of people get even more information just from an interaction with the resident. So they'll notice changes, family caregivers notice changes. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, just an example of MOCA not being perfect. We have a resident, she has a MOCA of zero. So she moved in in January, nonverbal. Initially, I had talked with her caregiver and I was very hesitant to have her move into Marama. I was worried that with a mocha of zero, you know, we needed to save our 12 beds for people with mochas in their teens and 20s, where I had more confidence we could do something about it. Well, the year happened and her caregiver was back in touch and said her power of attorney was back in touch and said, what do you think about taking KL and just seeing what's possible? And so I agreed she moved in in January and she went from, you know, she was a bit violent even at times because she couldn't express herself. So she would take your mm -hmm. arm and like, and wriggle it. I don't yes. even know what to say. But she was like, like trying, you. yeah, she would kind of hit people, yeah. hit the caregivers. And mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, so frustrating for her that she couldn't express herself. And what we've seen is she recently, she read a resident, or excuse me, a caregiver's name tag. She said, Christina, and looked up in her eyes. Of course, we're all crying. <laughs> like uh, she spelled her last name to another caregiver. She, one day I went in, she runs cold. She's a little, uh, she's very small. And so I was rubbing her arm and she looked me in the eyes and she said, that feels good. And mm. just having her could be able to communicate in full sentences, regularly express herself. She noticed, um, one day she noticed the caregiver had curled her hair differently and she pointed it out. Mm -hmm. she, she smiles so wide when Jose, one of her regular caregivers comes into the room. Her level of engagement has completely changed and her experience mm -hmm. of the world has completely changed. She is happier. She can yes. now, if she's hot, she can tell us. If she's cold, she can tell us. If she's hungry, she can tell us. And mm -hmm. this, shifts someone's quality of life I mean so so mm -hmm. dramatically and her mocha hasn't changed she still has a mocha of zero but so you know we need to use different assessment tools based on the different individuals but these are all of the things that we're collecting and also Nikki's helping to get Brain HQ up and running it takes a, quite a bit of staff but what our goal is to have everyone doing it once a week right now it's about once a month so that's through Recode um, and through Apollo. One of the things included in a stay at Marama is the Apollo subscription, that Recode subscription. So we make sure everybody is on Brain HQ and everyone getting the benefits of that Recode subscription. So kind of explain what Brain HQ is really quick. It's just little activities and exercises helping with memory, hearing, uh, face recognition, and things like that that will help them improve um, along the way. So, and also measure the improvement. And measure, yes. Which is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll um, move on to questions. Now we have quite <laughs> a few, so we're gonna get through as many as possible. Um, and uh, cost, so this comes up often. Um, thank you for asking. 
Uh, so cost starts at uh, $12,000 a month, and this includes everything that we've described. So it's the meals, it's the excellent caregiving, it's this passive experience of a non-toxic environment and engagement, regular all-day engagement, um, as well as uh, the Apollo subscription um, and many other things that I can't even think of. We drive people to and from appointments with their doctors. We make sure that they're getting, you know, all of the care that we need, that they need. Um, and uh, certainly um, that has been even more challenging with, um, with COVID, but we are doing everything that needs to be done to keep our residents safe. So $12,000 a month is our base rate. And then many of our residents have this reimbursed by uh, long-term care insurance. So that it, um, some of our residents even find that it's less expensive to be at Marama than it is to be at home if you need 24 hour a day care. Um, and all of the, you know, if you if you were going to buy the Livo 2 and the Juve lights and the Vi lights and all of these things, it actually ends up being more affordable to be at Marama and it also gives uh, everyone a little bit of a break. So the ratio for ketogenic diet, um, I'm not really sure is that uh, from Ikaika, I think, Melina, what's the ratio for the ketogenic diet? Is it modified? I'm not exactly sure what that means, but we do an organic ketogenic diet. Our goal is to have everyone in ketosis for at least three to six months after they move in. And then sometimes we're doing some um, days off of ketosis. It really depends on a few of uh, some metrics and also the, what your, the recommendation of your doctor is talk more about that. <laughs> uh, our facility, we currently have space for 12 residents. We have space for a few more, and then we're looking at a second facility in Southern California. So we plan to be expanding soon. Um, I have the beginnings of dementia, but not where I can't take care of myself, but I don't want to get there. Would I qualify to come there and gain the tools to prevent and reverse what's already started? Absolutely. So this is like my dream. I would love for everyone to start yes. this process sooner. It is so much easier, so much less costly to prevent than to reverse. Early stage dementia, I would say every time we can reverse. I'm, I'm hesitant. You hear me hesitant to say that because I think a lot of people won't believe it, but the only people who are not reversing their dementia, it's because in my experience, it's because they're not fully implementing the protocol. Now, there's probably a handful out there, and Dr. Bredesen is incredible. He and I are in touch regularly, and he's always asking, is there anybody not getting better? Because if there is someone that's not getting better, we want to we want to figure out why. We think there's a reason, and we can find it. So I um, am just thrilled to hear people are asking, can they do something to prevent further decline? Can they get things turned around? Absolutely. That is essentially what Marama is designed for. Now, people like KL who moved in with the Mocha of Zero, it's so much easier for us to show what's possible when the disease is more severe, right? It's much harder to, pr to prove uh, prevention. But when the disease is severe, we can show like, if this is possible for KL, what's possible for everybody with mild cognitive impairment? Everything is possible. It's completely reversible. And I, I stand by that forever. Um, can we receive a person with really advanced Alzheimer's? So this is a great question. We would love, I can't wait to be even larger so that we can take the entire spectrum of people um, and have you know individualized plans for everyone, everyone on that spectrum. We, it really depends on staffing. So if someone needs one-on-one -on -one care, then we have a conversation about what that would look like. It does increase the cost and we have to be able to staff it. Um, because of course, making sure everyone is safe and adequately cared for is our 100% commitment. And so it really, it, there's, we need to have a conversation about what that would look like and make sure it's feasible on all sides. Um, how do you handle patients that have not been able to get off alcohol? You know, this is such a great question. We find kind of when people are in that hump that I was describing, they're often detoxifying from alcohol, from TV even, from sugar, certainly. And so this is a process. 
It depends on the patient and what they've tried. Of course, this is all very individualized, but there's lots of, um, you know, of course, treatments, I think that are more specific to uh, addiction. And so I would recommend that first. We're not a detox facility in that respect. If somebody has an alcohol addiction or even a, a pill addiction, a pharmaceutical addiction, so it's very important um, that that's kind of not part of the picture when someone, if they have an alcohol addiction, uh, we, that would probably exclude them from, from Marama. Do you do any functional testing in addition to the therapies? So that's done on the medical side. So personally, yes, in my, in my clinical practice, I do all of the functional medicine testing. That is not included in what we do at Marama because it is by definition, it is residential. So there's no doctors on staff there's no nurses on staff. There are caregivers who are specifically there to implement the lifestyle piece of the Bredesen protocol. For the functional testing, you would want to contact a recode doctor, somebody who's been trained by Dr. Bredesen, and they would handle that for you. The Violite, how often is the Violite done? So the Violite, yeah, so that is, it's on a 20 minute cycle and that is done once, twice, three times a day. There's not really a cap, but we do it once or twice a day with our residents. And there's both Violet, Alpha, and Gamma. And uh, these are used, you know, one is more for dementia, one is more for um, for anxiety. And I'm actually forgetting which is which right now. I think it's, I, sorry, <laughs> we'll get back to you on that. I'll put it in the show notes. But yeah. one is more for anxiety, one is more for, for memory. And um, we can choose the one that's best in that moment. The, so any recommendations for the best red light therapy device device to purchase for the home for dementia and mold toxicity? toxicity. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting excited about this question. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we do like the Violite, we like the Juve Light. Um, Marv Brenham, he has been on the Evolving Past Alzheimer's podcast. Uh, my friend Nate Bregman is the host of that. I encourage you to check that out. And um, uh, Marv can talk, he does talk through um, his experience. He's also been interviewed by Dr. Bredesen on his Facebook Live. So there's a ton of literature out there. There's also a ton of uh, new companies out there that are trying to get people the best in red light therapy. Our experience is with Violite and Juve. Um, so I can't really speak to the others, although we are excited to have multiple facilities so that we can kind of test and see if there's one that's better than others and make sure our residents are getting access to be best on the market. Mm -hmm. So a uh, question from Sarah, do residents return home and is there a typical length of stay? Great question, Sarah. Um, residents, the goal is that people return home. Now our KL, our resident who moved in with a mocha of zero, it's unlikely that she would go back to work or she would go back to independent living. Although Dr. Bredesen has talked about the SARA trial, the uh, it stands for um, attempt at reversal, severe Alzheimer's reversal attempt is the trial that he wants to do. And certainly KL is, is an um, example of someone who is reversing severe Alzheimer's. Now, I don't know that she'll ever get to a mocha of 30, probably not. My goal and really my, my life's purpose is to change this conversation so that people never get that severe, that we prevent that degree of dementia. And um, when, when someone is earlier on, like the, the um, person who asked the question earlier about coming, when, when we're more preventing severe Alzheimer's and reversing mild cognitive impairment, then we're looking at six to 12 months. And really, if I don't see in six months some change, I'm wondering what we're missing. I expect by the six month mark, people are reversing their dementia. If they're not, we're missing something. And so that typical length of stay, it really depends on how severe the dementia is when they move in, how much progress we need to make. But a six to 12 month stay is about what I'm, what I'm recommending. I wouldn't do any less than six months because it takes a while the way Dr. Bredesen describes it, it's like a big tanker ship headed west. And first we have to slow it down and then we have to turn it around and then we have to come back in the other direction. That's something that just takes some time. Um, the replay, yes, there will be a replay. You'll get an email about it. Uh, can heart disease um, people do the ketogenic diet? Phenomenal question. Absolutely. The answer is yes. So there's a bit of a misnomer here that adding fats to your diet, and we heard this through the 80s, <laughs> that was criminal. 
They basically told us to eat sugar and carbs instead of fats because fats were bad. It's absolutely factually inaccurate. So the ketogenic diet, what you do is you start burning fat for fuel instead of sugar. Sugar is poisonous to your cardiovascular system. It's also poisonous to the brain. So getting on a ketogenic diet is probably the best diet for somebody with heart disease as well. Exercise, low sugar diets, um, this really can optimize metabolism. And of course you wanna be talking to your provider. You wanna get good advice for you as an individual. Um, but it, just because someone has heart disease, it does not exclude them from benefiting from the ketogenic diet. Um, do people, uh, residents have to be under the care of a Bredesen trained doctor? So my experience of the Bredesen protocol with dementia patients is that the more comprehensive we are in our approach to it, if we can do the lifestyle piece and we can do the medical piece, the more confidence I have in someone's reversal. If we do just pieces, we often see reversal, but not always. And so I, I highly recommend that if someone if, is thinking about moving their loved one into Marama or they themselves are thinking about it, that they have a Bredesen provider on their team. I would hate to wait six months and then find out there's mercury toxicity or mold toxicity that we never tested for or a thyroid imbalance. There's so many things that can be a little off that you know, we get the benefit of, of optimizing if you're working with a Bredesen trained provider. So I highly encourage that. Oh, it's good to see that you recognize that sugar is a cause of Alzheimer's. <laughs> yes, we're yes. on the same page. <laughs> Thank you. Um, vegan options in the KetoFlex format. So thoughts on a vegan diet for those affected with Alzheimer's. And do you offer vegan options to the KetoFlex format? So at this point, we do not. Um, I understand that different people have different kind of uh, issues with kind of come up with, um, there's lots of reasons why people opt for a vegan or vegetarian diet, environmental, ethical, you know, health, lots of them. And I completely understand that. Um, it is very hard to get a satisfying vegan ketogenic diet. And so we don't offer that at this point. Um, so what do you suggest for people who can't get to California? My mom is experiencing mild symptoms that I'd like to stop or reverse. What I recommend is <laughs> this book yes. right here, <laughs> The End of Alzheimer's. So get this book. Many, many, many patients come to me um, and residents as well who have gotten the book, who have read Dr. Bredesen's books, who are listening to the podcast, impl implementing as much as possible at home, and particularly when it's mild, what I recommend is doing that as comprehensively as possible at home. Most people get results. And then when they get stuck, go see a Bredesen doctor. If you're really stuck, move into Marama. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Bredesen has said that a vegan diet is an okay option. Are, you, are these residents in ketosis part of each day or not at all? So residents are in ketosis almost every day, all day. And the vegan option, so as I've understood from Dr. Bredesen, um, that it's really important to get into ketosis. So if you can be vegan and get into ketosis, that's great. Everyone's a little bit different. Their metabolism is a little bit different. So not everyone can get into ketosis, get enough nutrients and be vegan. That uh, is, the Venn diagram doesn't always overlap there. So we have to sort of assess for each person. Um, and right now we're not offering a, a vegan diet. What brand of sauna? So we have, uh, I, I love the higher dose sauna personally at home. That's what I use. It's a sauna blanket. I don't think, we don't even have one over we there yet. Mm -mm. We have, um, the, I think it's called Duherm, D-U-H-E-R-M. It's a copper one, low VOC, low EMF saunas um, that typically have the head out is what's best tolerated. So we wanna get people sweating. Uh, the name of the podcast that I mentioned, oh, the host is Mark. So Mark Squibb, S-Q-U-I-B-B, um, is the inventor of Live O2. So if you just Google Live O2, Mark Squibb, or just Live O2, you can find a ton of information. They have a great website that is full of great information about how to use and optimize your use of the Live O2 at home.
If a person has no blood sugar or insulin resistant component to their Alzheimer's, but rather toxin or hormonal causes, do they still need a ketogenic diet all the time? Really good question. So what we found, and there's more and more literature coming out, uh, it's been fun and I guess lucky that we thought a ketogenic diet was helpful, but the studies hadn't been done recently. And so we, we established things. I, start, I developed a study protocol in my office that uh, has a ketogenic diet as part of the foundation of that. And then at Marama, we're committed to a ketogenic diet. What I had seen clinically was that my patients needed to get into ketosis to improve and that the ketogenic diet is really the best diet for the brain. The brain wants to use ketones for fuel. And so um, we do use the ketogenic diet for everyone. And what we're seeing in the literature is that people get better regardless of the cause that they really, the brain appreciates ketones. So we do this all the time. What part does sleep play in all of this? Great question. So if the house is quiet, we encourage sleep. We're not having patients or residents eat right before sleep so that they get optimal sleep. Of course, they are working with the doctor and if it's uh, appropriate, they get referred to sleep medicine. Um, we do everything we can to optimize sleep at Marama, keeping the house quiet, mm -hmm. making, you know, there's not activities going on all night. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just encourage people to get the best sleep possible. But that's really on the medical side if there is a pathology there, like a obstructive sleep apnea or anything else that is interfering with good, high quality sleep. All right. Uh, so, Okay, hi, hi, hi to everyone. This is Sarah at the top of these questions and lots of people saying hello. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Um, so here's a great question. So in California, can an ND prescribe the supplements uh, recommended by Dr. Bredesen? So um, this is on the more medical side. So yes, naturopathic doctors in the state of California can prescribe. So supplements are sort of a prescription, but really those are mostly out of, over the counter. Now at Marama, um, we do require a prescription for all supplements for the diet and for some of the exercise and activities. Now in the state of California, a naturopathic doctor can also prescribe the medications that sometimes come up on the Bredesen protocol. So this might be thyroid medication, antiparasitic or antibacterial medications that might help the gut. Uh, also thyroid, um, did I say thyroid? Hormones, mm -hmm. hormone, all of those things that uh, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, thyroid, getting those hormones um, modulated and balanced does often require a prescription and both MDs, NDs, nurse practitioners, DOs and physician's assistants can all prescribe that. So mold testing, this is a really great question. What type of mold testing? What I typically recommend is uh, immunolytics and they have plates. Um, so they're Petri dishes that you can put out and you can chat with someone at immunoly immunolytics about how to do that, excuse me. And what you wanna do is take the top off, put it out in your home for an hour or two, one in each room, including the attic, the garage, everywhere, and then see if something grows. If something does grow over the span of about five days, then you send it off to immunolytics. And that can give you a relatively good sense of if there's mold growing in your home. The other thing that I do clinically, again, this isn't at Marama, but in the clinic with patients is I like the real-time mycotoxin testing. So we do that provoked with some glutathione or a sauna, and that usually stirs them up enough that we can catch them in urine and then have a sense of what uh, the mold burden, toxic, uh, mold toxicity burden is there. Some really great questions. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're... Um... So mm -hmm. lots of questions about implementing the protocol at home. So again, definitely going back to Dr. Bredesen's work, his book, and then finding a recode provider and particularly a health coach in your area can be just absolutely... Uh, phenomenal. So, so helpful in getting that extra 
like that extra bit of information that you didn't realize you were missing that's keeping you from getting the full benefit of the protocol. So the health coaches are phenomenal. There's a bunch of them that have been trained. Dr. Bredesen has trained over 2000 practitioners around the world. So uh, reach out to the one closest to you. Um, there's really, we're working with several of them in the clinic um, as health coaches to help with our study. And they're just, just wonderful, committed, excellent human beings who are so well-trained, so thoughtful, and, um, and really well-informed about the subject. So getting them on your team early is something I highly recommend. Oh, I, so I'm going to grab another book. People are asking about keto books, and I have them in my office surrounded by all of these great books. So this is my favorite keto book. It's the Alzheimer's Antidote by um, Amy Berger. And if you uh, came to the summit, if you were able to make it to the summit, I interviewed Amy on the summit, and she talks a lot about keto um, and also a ton about what you can do to make keto simple. So she doesn't want it to be so overly complicated that you're not able to implement, right? The most important part of this is actually doing it. So this is a phenomenal resource. Again, it's called the Alzheimer's Antidote by Amy Berger. So another question about how many residents. So right now we have 12, we're building capacity for more. Okay, great. So this is from Kimberly. Thank you. Bless you and your team, Dr. Sanderson. Thank you, Kimberly. As an RN, I was trained that Alzheimer's was a prolonged death sentence. Thank goodness that's no longer true. Your treatment and costs are prohibitive. Can the caregiver extend the testing and visit frequency to prolong the length of time to pay the estimated $25,000? So on the clinical side, we have estimated $25,000 over the course of six to 12 months. So this is not at Marama. I, don't, I wanna make sure that that's clear. This would be at Solsere at the clinic. What we've estimated is about a $25,000 chunk to cover the expenses of supplements, IVs, testing visits over the course of six to 12 months. So can you extend the testing and visit frequency? You can. Um, our experience is that hitting it hard and fast and as aggressively and comprehensively as possible is what gets us the best results. But of course, everyone has to do what they can. There are lots of pieces here that are absolutely free. The foundations are sleep, stress management, good, a great diet, and exercise. Those things are free. So do what you can at home. Do, I, I mean, all of these things, it doesn't work unless you do it. And I can't tell you how many people I've had spending the money to come and see me and getting the supplements and then they don't take them or they don't do the exercise or they don't prioritize sleep and confidence, you know, goes out the window really at that point. So if, if cost is an issue, get Dr. Bredesen's book, read it. It's, you know, $25 and, and do everything that he suggests in the book that you possibly can with the amount that you have. I can speak to that a little bit. I think being in this environment and learning more about how to reverse cognitive decline. I've looked at my own life and I'm looking at the cleaning products I have in my home, my diet, making sure I exercise so that I can prevent having cognitive decline in the future as well. So I feel like this is for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone can benefit from changing their diet, from getting on a ketogenic diet, maybe not forever, but just temporarily to see how it feels. We, the most common response we get from someone is there's increased energy, better sleep, some weight loss, and improved cognitive function, mental clarity. So, and also reduction in bloating. You know, a lot of people get great benefits. And just as an experiment, I encourage everyone to try a ketogenic diet at some point. Mm -hmm. So Dwayne, um, I've read Dr. Bredesen's book, the 20, or excuse me, the 2021 preprint, uh, where many patients have long-term reversals. 
So what is a typical 30 point score of a client on admission? What fraction of clients have had reversal and gone home typical and with a typical score on exit? So this is all very brand new. We can't wait to tell you how many people are doing that. And uh, we have only been open since March of 2020. We literally opened Marama the week before the world shut down with COVID. <laughs> this was a blessing mm. in many, many ways. And um, it was challenging for us because we just don't have that much data. Now, Dr. Bredesen, his, uh, we're doing a clinical trial that will follow up Bredesen's trial in my clinic at Solceri, so not at Marama. Um, although we're tra keeping track of data, it's not an IRB approved study. Um, so Dr. Bredesen's publication showed that 84% of participants reversed their dementia. We're seeing very similar results. Um, the more I have, again, I have much more confidence, the more comprehensive we can be and the earlier we get started. So the more mild the, the decline is, the more confidence we have, and the more comprehensive we are about implementing the protocol, the more confidence I have. That being said, I will never, ever tell someone there isn't hope because of what we've seen, what I saw with LB, the first patient I presented, and then what we've seen with KL at Marama, people can reverse even severe decline. It's harder and it's more expensive, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. This is Rebecca, the LIVO2 can be applied to someone who has had a stroke, but has the sign of memory loss. So absolutely, um, the post-stroke, post any sort of traumatic brain injury, LIVO2 is very, very helpful for it. It's definitely part of uh, the holistic approach that we would take to anyone with any sort of traumatic brain injury, and including a stroke. Oh, I was just gonna say something with that is you don't have to use the LIVO2 on a bike or on an elliptical or something like that. You can use it in the sauna. You just have to increase your heart rate and your blood flow, but uh, yeah, so you can use it while you're seated just in, in a sauna or something like that. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to have expensive equipment. Yes. So this is, oh, thank you, Cindy. This is really amazing. Can you clarify, is Marama a residence for people to live out the remainder of their lives or is it a residential treatment facility where people with dementia come to improve and learn to live better and then get discharged? So really, really great question. It's a little bit of both at the moment, and we would love to be able to um, attract the kind of the spectrum. So there are residents there who plan to live there for as long as they can. And there are also residents who have moved in with the sole intent of learning everything they can there, getting, understanding and living the, the, the rhythm, the daily rhythm of the routine of caring for their brain, and they will move home. So we have a little bit of a mix and, um, and we're, we're welcoming everyone at this point. Um, of course, not everyone, everyone, but there's, there's a good fit. And so we're welcoming as many people as we can in the 12 beds that we have. What do I think of SPECT scans for neurovascular perfusion and amyloid plaque changes? Yeah, so this um, is probably Daniel Amen's work, maybe what you are referring to, very pretty pictures of the brain. <laughs> and um, I really appreciate what Dr. Amen is doing. We don't tend to um, notice that they change our treatment recommendations and it can be quite expensive. So, you know, when we're, when we're prioritizing what needs to be done, I don't always recommend the spec scans because um, it can be costly and doesn't really change the course of treatment. How long do you recommend someone staying? I think I answered this. The minimum time would be six months. And then really, as long as we like you, you can stay as long as you want. We'll put you on staff <laughs> if you get way better. Uh -huh. So do we accept people from overseas coming from Lauren? Uh, yes, we, we have, there's no reason that we wouldn't, you know, we want, there needs to be a power of attorney, depending on the severity of the dementia, there needs to be a power of attorney that we can have close communication with. So they're responsible for, uh, you know, okaying any medical decisions, um, okaying changes to supplements or prescriptions, um, you know, helping being available basically if something unexpected comes up. So it's really important um, that we have close communication with that power of attorney, whoever's responsible. And, but there's no reason why it couldn't be someone overseas. You might get phone calls from us in the middle of the night. You can't, you can't uh, decline them. 
How long does it take for someone with mild cognitive decline to improve? So what we have seen clinically and at Marama is within six months, people are improving. If they're not, we're missing something and then we go looking for it. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, this one? Yeah. For those who can't, yeah, for those who cannot come to stay there to stay, can you guide them to similar protocols at home? So yeah, we talked about this book, uh, Dr. Dale Bredesen's book, The End of Alzheimer's. I'm actually reading this book myself. It's very fascinating, uh, really gives, he has a couple books. There's The End of Alzheimer's program, and that really lays out what it looks like to go through a program like this. It goes through the diet, there it is. So it goes through the diet and different testings that you can do. So there's a lot. So I would recommend like she said before, Dr. Sanderson said before, but to get this book and to implement it in your own life. And like I said, I'm trying to implement things like that, like this in my own life as well. Like I'm on the ketogenic diet right now and I feel great. I have like mental clarity, I have more energy less bloated. It's really awesome. I think it's something that everybody should try it, but this is definitely something I would recommend is getting this book, um, one of his books and just reading through it and, and soaking up the program and then implementing it at home. Alternatively, if you are a, any sort of healthcare provider, even a health coach, um, you can take Bredesen's, Dr. Bredesen's Recode course and that goes deeply dives into a lot of what we're discussing, the details. It's designed for practitioners, so for doctors. So it's very detailed, um, very in-depth, and would give you a lot of the tools and resources. Or working with at least a health coach who can help you to implement some of these things. There's very common issues that come, come up. You know, it's resistance or nausea. I mean, the, the gamut of things come up. And so having someone that can cheer you on and help troubleshoot is really like so valuable. So, so valuable. So question, do we help with residents' personal hygiene? So yes, absolutely. Um, the, we do help with, you know, making sure that everyone's brushing their teeth, taking regular showers. We have both male and female caregivers so that if someone needs, you know, they're modest and they need help with a shower or dressing or shaving or anything mm -hmm. like that, they, um, they have their modesty is, is, you know, respected and they can get someone with the same sex to help them. Mm -hmm. um, Are there Bredesen providers who offer virtual services? Great question. So at Solceri, there are Bredesen providers who offer virtual services to those in the state of California. Outside of that, I don't know, but there is a provider website that, uh, or a practitioner locator on the Apollo website. So if you just go to um, the apollohealthco.com, I believe, Dr. Bredesen's website, you'll find a practitioner locator and um, you can, I think, search through there and select people who do virtual appointments. So if we find that someone has metal toxicity, how is that detected so they don't go back into that environment? So this actually comes up more with mold because mold is more common these days. Heavy metals, we've done a relatively good job getting metals out of the environment these days. Lead used to be in the pipes, used to be in paints, um, it used to be in fuel, and that's, you know, it's been taken out of those products. So there's less lead exposure these days. Mercury typically comes from dietary sources, like fish in particular, and it can also come from amalgams in the mouth. So identifying those exposures is important, and, um, and then that typically isn't in the home though. Molds is the more common thing that might be in the home. And they're working with a Bredesen trained provider. They can help you kind of troubleshoot how to find that. Typical ketone numbers and how to measure those. We recommend at this point using the Keto Mojo, which is a blood finger prick test. Uh, we don't do this at Marama. So again, Marama is a residential care uh, facility and so it's non-medical and so we don't do regular ketone checks at Marama for our residents because we don't have medical providers on staff. What we do do is whenever they are getting their testing done we check for ketones in their urine and in their blood and 
every time they're in ketosis. Um, do you find that the keto diet increases cholesterol and do you need to reduce it even though that's an old myth? Yeah, great <laughs> question, really easy. Um, so typically people's cholesterol numbers come down over about three to six months. It takes a little while for that to happen, but if you have high cholesterol, triglycerides in particular come from a high sugar diet. And then as you start to move in, as your metabolism, as your metabolism switches from burning sugar for fuel to burning fat for fuel, uh, you actually reduce your cholesterol levels. Um, and if you're having really good high quality fats, olive oil, for some people, coconut oil, um, the avocados, all of the sesame oil, lots and lots mm -hmm. of good high quality oils. Um, these are fine for um, people with high cholesterol, even eggs and some grass fed animal protein is fine. So Julie, do you use racetam, citicoline, alpha GPA for patients and recommend them? So yeah, um, I recommend actually the Qualia Mind product, which has all of these things in it uh, for my patients. Uh, Dr. Bredesen also has a recode line of supplements that you can look at. And um, those are, those typically we try to use something that combines um, them. From San Sandra, uh, do residents at Marama get visits from family and friends? Yes, they of course. do. We love <laughs> yes. having them for a meal. We love feeding family and friends and having them come typically outside after they've been tested for COVID that week so that we um, really are, again, vigilant about keeping COVID out of the building. What we did during the height of COVID is that we had a room that was dedicated for our residents to be in. And then we had the window um, and we had their friends and family visit from outside the window. So it's of course like heartbreaking yeah. to get through that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're hopefully on the other end or starting to be on the other end of that and be able to uh, let our guard down a little bit around that and have more family and more friends coming. Yeah, and they get really excited to show off their daughter or son or family or friends. It's very cute. <laughs> So do you have similar results with other types of cognitive decline and dementia, such as Lewy body or other Parkinson? So um, with, um, we have less data on Lewy body, Parkinson's, um, French temporal dementia, some of these other types of dementias. What happens often with Lewy body is that there are some significant, um, there are significant changes in personality and sometimes tendencies uh, towards more violent behavior. And because the environment that we're creating is very much community-based and we want people really engaged um, with each other and really loving on each other and encouraging each other, having someone that uh, it has, as is typical of Louis body where there's um, more violent tendencies. It's just not quite the right fit for us at Marama right now. We look forward to a time when we have the space and the staff and you know this, this idea of treating people in a way where we assume they can get better. I'm sure that somebody with Lewy body can get better. We've seen, um, we've seen Lewy body dementia stop progressing after six months, but not reverse yet in my clinical practice. So probably other things that we need to find out. Um, one thing that we know is that often Alzheimer's, you know, we see beta amyloid plaques are kind of what defines that and tau proteins. There's often some Lewy body also present and in Lewy body, there's often beta amyloid plaques present. So really what we're doing, whether it's Parkinson's or Lewy body, whatever we call it, we, what, what I'm more interested in is why it got there, right? Why did this neurodegenerative process start? The etiology is, so much more interesting to me. And so that's what we're really focused on is identifying why and then turning that around. Um, and I know that that's possible with Lewy body and Parkinson's. It's just a matter of really collecting more data. So question is Medicare cover any of this. Unfortunately, Medicare does not yet cover the Marama experience. Um, Medicare does cover some of the labs that your functional medicine or recode provider will run. And so you just would want to talk to them about what is covered there. Uh, we are, we are doing the research and we are certainly working tirelessly to get as much information um, out there into the powers that be to shift that. This 
this really, uh, this disease will bankrupt Medicare uh, in the next few decades if we don't do something about it. And we think, I certainly am in the camp of people who believe that there is, there is real practical information that we can use now to stop the tsunami of people with dementia that is coming towards us. So the supplements, supplements definitely uh, connect with your Recode provider and they will give you a supplement protocol also that's individualized for you also in this first book from Dr. Bredesen. In the back, I have it flagged here. Um, it is on page 233, <laughs> 234, 235 is a list of supplements that he recommends. That's so a great place to start. What kind of exercise? This is a really good question. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so we do a lot of resistance training. So I, we have resistance bands. So we do like rows, we do um, like, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm like losing my train of thought. We do uh, free weights. So we do like, I don't know, just basic weight lifting exercises, strength training. Um, and then we do something like sit to stand, which is more squat based because that's something that is functional because you need to be able to get up and down from a chair, from the toilet. And so just making sure that there's, we have strength in our legs. Um, we do some balancing exercises as well. We do some hip mobility. Uh, we have a row machine, so we're doing some rowing and they are loving this machine and they're doing really well as well. So like, this is for cardio, but also for strength. And then, um, we, we do a lot of, yeah, like stretches, but also strengthening exercises. So, and we have resistance bands as well. So I'll use that for, um, like hip strength and leg strength and for arms as well. There's a variety of things you can do. And I always just try it with them and they love trying it. Like we have one of our residents who said, I will try anything because I know that this will help me. This will heal me. And they get really excited about the, the exercises that we do. That really improves outcomes too, is when our residents and our patients are on board, when they're fully mm -hmm. committed to the process and we're not dragging them or their daughter or son isn't dragging them through the process uh, <laughs> unwillingly. Um, it's really amazing when they are on board and excited about the process. They're so much more engaged. They're gonna get way better outcomes. Mm -hmm. When I think about exercise for dementia, there's basically three or four different types of exercise. Walking is not enough. So <laughs> walking is great. You can't walk too much, but it's really important that you uh, have multiple types of exercise. So strength training, as Nikki discussed, very important. Cardio, like we get on the Livo 2 or even in the sauna at some level um, on the rower, really important. So cardio, strength training, and then the other two are a little bit overlapped, but essentially what you're doing is you're, you're engaging your cognitive function while you're exercising. So this isn't at a sprint, this is at a level of exercise where um, you can still talk, but you wanna be engaging your brain. And so some ways to do this are like yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, Qigong, or you've probably heard that ballroom dancing is a great way to improve cognitive function. What you have to do is be very present and engage your brain in remembering the next step. That is very, very helpful for um, reversing cognitive decline. You're not only getting that circulation, the, but the muscle memory and the brain memory with it. The other thing that there's um, a group created this, oh gosh, um, Genius Gyms is the name of it. It's, an, it's a new uh, entrepreneurs out of San Diego. It's a new app where you basically it engages you to exercise and quiz yourself. So you're getting that cognitive stimulation, like learning a language or doing some math problems like yes. you do with the residents <laughs> at the same time that you're getting a little bit of exercise. The other thing we have is the rebounder. We didn't talk yes, about that. Yes, we didn't talk about that. That's a great yes. thing to bounce on the rebounder and quiz yourself or, or cognitively challenge yourself at some level. You get exponential benefits in terms of cognitive outcomes. So really fun stuff. So testing, questions about testing, again, that goes back to the, the um, clinical side of things. So we're actually gonna be doing a webinar coming up, stay on the email list 
you'll get an alert about a webinar coming up in the next week or two that is focused on what we're doing clinically. So we're going to dive deeply as we have into Marama tonight. We're going to do that on the clinical side in the next week or two. So stay tuned for that. We're going to um, answer all of your questions on that side. So a great question from Brittany. If the cognitive decline may have been in part or totally from a TBI, would the protocol mm -hmm. still help? Phenomenal question. Yes, the answer is yes. So there are things that we would do more specifically. So LIVO2, phosphatidylcholine, um, phosphatidylserine, NAD plus IV sometimes, uh, B12, omegas, all of these things can be very helpful. And then a functional neurologist, someone like Ittatis Karazian was interviewed on the summit that we did recently. And he goes into this pretty extensively about how you can use functional neurology. A trained chiropractor can help you to create exercises that stimulate um, new brain connections in the area that was, tra that was traumatized. So yes, absolutely. If there's a TBI that can contribute and we need to address it. method to detox heavy metals. Again, this will be more on the clinical side, but it really depends on the metal. So lead, cadmium, um, they come out it, using different binders or chelating agents and like say mercury or, or arsenic. So it really depends on the heavy metal uh, and we'll go into more detail when we do the clinical side. How would it work for those with MCI to be in a living environment with someone more cognitively impaired? You know, this is such a great question from Karen because I had it myself. Uh, when we were considering having KL come to Marama, she again is the resident with the mocha of zero. I was concerned that are, are the other residents gonna think like, what if that's what's gonna happen to me? Are they gonna be worried that they're going in that direction? Uh, it, the opposite is what actually happened. It's just been so beautiful. Um, KL, I think she's also just like a special case. Mm -hmm. She's so endearing. Yes. She's so lovable. <laughs> and so everyone just dotes on her. And I think the other residents, what we see is that they get a sense of purpose from helping her and showing her and teaching her. And they actually they take some ownership of her mm -hmm. mood, her engagement. They want her there. And, um, and I, I think that it proved to me that the right community, the right environment, um, you just, you see people become, uh, you know, it's more than just about them. It's really about how they contribute. That's actually a question that we ask on our application to become a resident at Marama is how do you see yourself contributing? This is really a community where uh, you don't kick your feet up and get cocktails by the pool. This is, you're there to do hard work and engage and participate and contribute. Mm -hmm. They are very encouraging to each other. I've noticed that a lot being around them. And if someone's being negative, another one will call them out on it and say, we need to be positive. We need to say yes. We need to stop saying no. And talking about KL, I've seen the residents come around her, like you said, and make sure she's okay. If she has a sad face, they're wondering, they're asking like, why is she sad? Is she okay? How can we help her? They're very loving towards her and it's a beautiful thing to see, but they're very encouraging to each other. And so complimentary yeah. to it. Like, oh, your hair looks so nice today. Yes, so they do. <laughs> to each other. It's they really, are. really amazing. Um, so where can you take the course? The Dr. Bredesen course for practitioners is on the Apollo website. You can see there's a drop down for practitioners. So just go there. And, um, and you can, yeah, uh, follow through the steps. I've taken it, it's not that hard. Um, but yeah, if you get there, um, let us know if you have questions. Do I understand that the minimum stay is six months? Yes. <laughs> do we use MCT oil? Um, yes, we do. And uh, this again, it typically is prescribed as a supplement through your provider. And then we are implementing that at Marama. All right, so um, if there are any last questions, we're going to be signing off here soon. We thank everyone 
uh, please, we're going to keep the questions that are in the chat and we will do a follow up webinar in the future, answer any of those questions. We so appreciate everyone who has participated and joined us. Special shout out to all of the caregivers out there, mm -hmm. like yes. Nikki <laughs> and our oh. staff at Marama, but yes. everyone at home as well who is doing the hard work and the heavy lifting mm -hmm. of really trying to reverse these diseases in our loved ones. Um, we, we know how hard you work. We know how stressful it can be. Please take care of yourselves as well. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for the work that you do and for showing up here tonight. Yes, thank you. <laughs>